wanted to end the video there. It actually goes on a little bit more and it talks about the marketing strategy. So again, the key word is, or the key expression is think differently. So the question that always people have is, how do you think differently? And this is one model which actually says that in order to think different, you must act different. So basically, by changing your actions, you can also change the way you think. So people that think different, it's not like they are born with something. Okay, This is something that you can learn through practice. So the key idea here is by practicing, questioning, observing, experimenting, and networking, it leads you to basically think different, which is what we call association, and making links between ideas from different areas. And I'm going to quickly walk through each of these different points. Okay, so let me look at question, questioning first. So, studies have found that creative and innovative people tend to ask more questions than non-creative people. And it's not just more questions, it's also the types of questions that they ask. They ask more challenging questions. They ask why, why not, what if? So again, by asking questions, it helps you to develop a more creative mindset. So it's basically the importance of curiosity. All of us, when we were young, were curious. Sure, when you were four years old, five years old, six years old, you were asking questions, you know, why is the sky blue? You're probably driving your parents crazy, right, by asking so many questions. And then finally, your teachers, when you are very young, finally say, you know, stop asking questions, listen, right? And so your curiosity is sort of suppressed, it's diminished. So I think we all are natural, naturally curious. Unfortunately, the education system often takes it away from us. So now it's a question of how do we get this back. Uh, so again, the importance of curiosity and challenging assumptions, and again, this idea of practice, practice, and practice. And for an example, um, I was at a conference in the US, and this was one of the questions that someone asked us. They said, what if you could design the perfect mobile music listening device? What would it look like? So this is an example of a creative question. So we had a, I was in the US, actually the author of the book who, who wrote The Innovator's DNA. And he said to the audience, you know, if we could have the most perfect music system, what would it look like? And most people in the audience, including myself, said, oh, it'd be something small, like some little earbud you could put into your ear. And it would stream the music, right? It would stream the music from the cloud. No need for an iPod device something small, put in your ear, wherever you go, you're sinking to the cloud, and you're getting your music. But then, about a month later, I see in the news, uh, Apple just paid $3.2 billion for Dr. Dre's Beats. And so you see here, the tendency is actually not small, it's actually big again. It's the perfect sound, it's the fashion, it's the color, right? Almost like mobile phones. Remember years ago, Nokia, they were getting smaller, smaller, and smaller. And then all of a sudden, the phones got bigger, bigger, and bigger, right? With Samsung and so forth, right? So it's a little bit with music, right? So again, trends do change. So to me, this is quite interesting. I thought it should have been smaller, but actually now it seems to be going in a very different direction. Also, observe. Pretend to be an anthropologist. So uh, observing is very important. Observing customers. How do they live? How do they work? What problems do people have? Uh, importance of travel. I mean, if you hear the story of Starbucks, it talks about Schultz talks about going to Italy, seeing coffee culture in Italy, and then thinking, I can do this in the U.S. and changing the idea of, you know, latte's cappuccino, but designing it more for the American market. I give the story of Brown. If, if anyone has heard Chan Bun Ling talk about the starting up of Brown coffee in Cambodia, 
he also talks about going to Australia and seeing coffee culture in Australia and then coming back to Cambodia with this idea. Um, some of my students also, they did this one in Monkey Kong, called Kong Homemade Popcorn Cafe, which is different flavors of popcorn. But when she was interviewed, she said she got the idea from Thailand through travel, observing, right? So observing is important. You might not be able to travel, but you can observe things in Phnom Penh. You can ask questions like, why did this outlet locate here? Why not another location? What is their objective? So this idea of practicing, asking questions, and observing. So many of us go to work in the morning, you don't look, right? You don't see. Many of you, you're thinking about some problem in your head, you're not looking on the street, you're not looking what's happening, new businesses starting up, then suddenly you see something for the first time and you say, wow, how did I miss that, right? So again, this importance of uh, observing is also very important. Uh, just a quick example, Swenson is one of my favorite examples. When Swenson's came to Phnom Penh, the people behind, uh, well, I talked to some of the people behind Swenson's, but I didn't think it was going to work. Why? Because I thought the price was too high for Cambodians to pay. But I was wrong. So I went to Soria, and I turned out I had an event in Soria. I had to spend many hours in Soria Mall. So I, kept, I watched and observed what was happening at Swenson's. I saw two interesting things. Number one, people eat ice cream here in the morning. We don't do that in Canada. We don't do that in the US. So suddenly, culture impacts the volume of sales. And number two, Cambodians, when they eat ice cream, they share. So in, in Canada, we think one big dessert, one person. $5, $7 is expensive. Cambodia can be four spoons, which means the price goes down per person. Right? So suddenly, it becomes affordable. So again, I would not know this if it was not through observation. Right? So again, the power of looking and seeing how customers behave, how people behave, and obviously potential uh, business ideas. Uh, network, very, very important. I always say this to my students. It's not just having a lot of friends, whether it's on Facebook, LinkedIn, however you're connected with them, but it's also diversity of your network. So it's having different types of people. So if you're an accounting student and you hang out with a lot of other accounting students, that's not very creative. But if you're an accounting student and you have a friend at ITC who's doing food science, maybe you have a friend at the Royal University of Agriculture doing something on agriculture, this is what we mean by diverse network. So it also age, how many, how many of you know people that are very old, very young, different age group, different nationality, different occupation, different interests, different hobby, right? So the more diverse, the, the bigger your network and the more diverse, both quantity and quality, leads to a lot of opportunity. This is a great book, Never Eat Alone. It's the idea that even when you're eating at lunch or dinner, you should always be using it to meet new people. The author of this book always said every day he would have lunch with a different person someone outside of his business. So if he was in finance, he would be having, you know, he would try to have lunch with artists, with writers, with people that are very, very different on viewpoint, just to be exposed to unique and different ideas. Uh, network and experiment. Experiment can be try something new. How many of you Maybe many of you now go to Eon, Super, uh, Eon Mall. Maybe you're, hopefully you're trying new types of food, new types of restaurants for the first time. Maybe you go to, I don't know, Miam Miam and try the black rice, or you go to pepper lunch or something that's a little bit different from what you did before. So the idea is, you know, take a new class, study a new subject, read a new book, expose yourself to new ideas. But also, like Michael Dell, maybe you take things apart to understand how they work, um, or you test your ideas with small experiments to see whether this would be successful or not successful. So again, experiment, very, very important. Okay, so the idea basically here is by acting different, questioning, observing, networking, and experimenting, 
it leads to thinking different that we call association. So association is lateral thinking. Connecting widely different ideas, objects, technologies, and disciplines to create something new. So I take an idea from art and design, I mix it with engineering or business, and I come up with something new, which is perhaps a potential business. So as you can see, it's smashing ideas together, right? So different light bulbs converging from different areas to create something new. Uh, creativity, and I, I think Steve Jobs is a great example. I think many of you heard the story before, how Steve Jobs developed the font for the computer printer. When he was in university, he took an art class in calligraphy. Calligraphy is how to draw all of the characters, an art class. And many people would say that's a waste of time. What is the value of taking a calligraphy class, an art class? Well, years later, he combined that with technology. So when they first came out with the printer, it was like a typewriter, only one font. Steve Jobs had the idea from the art class, and he said, what if we connect this idea of calligraphy with the computer printer? I want to have many fonts to print, not just one font. So had Steve Jobs not taken that art class, we might only be printing with a couple of fonts right now, or it might have taken us a lot longer to get to where we are in terms of the different types of fonts. Um, so again, the idea is, Practice, practice, practice. Practice asking questions. Practice observing, right? So every day, maybe at the end of the day, ask yourself, what did I observe different today, right? So really start looking and challenging and asking questions. Boeing, one is an aircraft company. One is a communications company, Blackberry. If you combine both of those companies from completely different industries, would there be a benefit? Are you creating something new? Any ideas? So two big companies, Boeing, 747, 787s, Blackberry, you all know Blackberry. If I took those two companies, completely different, and I smashed them together, merged them together in a business way, would there be any benefit? And this is the creative aspect, right? This forces you to not just think in one category, but in different categories. Now, some of the answers my students come up with, well, maybe they can design a BlackBerry phone that can be used in the aircraft. So right now, we have to turn off our phone. But if maybe these two companies work together, perhaps with the technology, they could design something that I did not have to turn off my phone when I'm in the sky. That would be very cool. Maybe a lot of people would buy that. Or maybe Boeing could help with the design of the BlackBerry. They actually have a BlackBerry Porsche that was in the car. So maybe we could have some Boeing designed phone. Or Boeing has a problem of their aircraft being lost, right? In Malaysia Airlines. So BlackBerry, that's an expert in tracking, maybe could use its technology so we no longer lose 747s somewhere in this world, right? So again, this is the creativity. It's to open your mind, to use your imagination. Sometimes the ideas go nowhere, but maybe one out of 10 ideas maybe go somewhere, and this may be a potential business success.